first time in prison, here champ on your way there, and what's it like when you get there? So, when you step out of that courtroom, when you've been remanded by the magistrates, you get tucked down to the cells, take your out, process you, put the handcuffs on you, and up into the paddy wagon. So you're back in the wagon, in a little room, tiny little fucking compartment on the sweat box, and you're on your way to prison. Hopefully, it isn't too long of a journey. Well, my first one was from concert magistrates up in County Durham, all the way up to Northumberland, Cassington, and it was about a 45-minute drive and it's quite uncomfortable in the back of them, especially when you're bouncing around on them back roads. But yeah, uh, as you're in this paddy wagon, on your way there, all sorts going through your mind. You're thinking about what it's going to be like when you get there. Obviously, like I say, if it's your first time, you've never been there before, you don't know what to expect. Obviously, you've heard the stories about people that you know that's been to prison. But still, you don't know what to expect, so all these thoughts are going through your mind. But if you're ready for it, you're ready for it. You get there, you've got to do what you've got to do. But you're still having all these thoughts and thinking, what the fuck am I going to be coming into here? But you go through, the gates open up, go through, then the back gate shuts, and then another gate inside the prison opens. So it's like double gated. They drive you through the second gate. You go through and they pull up near reception. And normally they leave you sitting on the fucking wagon for about another 20 minutes while they're getting processed or they're taking all your paperwork in ready to get you off the wagon. So after about another 20 minutes, they open up, take you off, walk you into reception, and there's normally other people, other lads on the bus with you, the paddy wagon, whatever you want to call it, and you all get put into the same room in reception, and you're sitting there, and then you've got the feelings of anxiety, fear, all these different feelings are running through your body. Yeah, I'm apprehensive, angry, just a hundred different emotions at the same time. And then the screws will shout you through, ask your name, process you, take all your belongings off you that you've got, strip all, strip every bit of dignity from you. You're now a product of Her Majesty, Her Majesty's prison. Yeah, you sign the papers to say you're now officially a prisoner. Yeah, and then you get tucked into the prison. Gets the um, process through reception, then you're off on the uh, induction wing, which was, I think it was in Cassington, was D wing when I was there. Obviously, it's not a, uh, it's no longer a young offenders that no more. It's now HMP Northumberland, Cassington and Ackleton together. So, uh, you first, like I say, you're on your way to the wing. And this is when you're feeling the most apprehensive. You're thinking, who's going to be on here? Who you're bumping into? What's it going to be like? But in your mind, if you're ready for it like I was, I was ready for anything. So I was just ready to take take anything on that was in my way. Um, and then you get put up on the wing. As, I, as they opened the gates and took me onto the wing, it was a Friday afternoon. And it was like a fucking youth club. Everyone was just bouncing around. They had the new monkey music on. Yeah, which is just rave music. MC and that. And I was thinking, wow, this is a fucking crazy, this. Yeah, so I sat on association for a little bit. And then it was this end of association. You go back to your pad. Yeah, it was single pads locally up there. Yeah, with the young offenders. So you go back to your pad, which is what you were really wanting. You just want to get in your pad so you can get your thoughts together and fucking get your cell put on track. So you go back to your pad and then you're just trying to absorb everything that's just happened. 
you're feeling anxious still because then you're thinking about the next day, what your routine's going to be like, what time you're getting opened. You've just totally lost control of everything. You've went from being a free person out in the free world to being stuck in a tiny little cell with nothing but your thoughts, nobody to turn to, no phone to pick up and ring back home, just you and your thoughts stuck in that tiny little cell and nothing else to keep you occupied. Um, and then, like I say, you're just waiting for the next year. You can't open your door, you can't do nothing. You're now a part of that system, stuck in your thoughts. Horrible. If anyone tries to glamorise it and think it's good and clever, take another look, because it's absolutely not. It's absolute horrible shithole. I mean, who wants to be stuck in a prison? Stuck in a little tiny cell where you can't even walk out and go to your toilet. You can't go to your kitchen for your comforts. You can't go and grab a pack of crisps or drink out the fridge. You can't do nothing. So don't be sucked in by people saying it's good, big and clever. It's nothing. Clever is not going to prison and not ending up in there. That's what is clever. But getting back to this first time. So you're waiting for the next day. You get opened up in the morning. That's when you find out your routine. But your anxiety is going through the roof still because you're uncertain. That's what's the worst part of it, the uncertainty. You're not knowing what's happening. What If your door's getting opened up or anything, what your routine's going to be. What time you're going for dinner, what time you're going for tea. But um, these are all the things that you're experiencing and feeling for your first time. And you're also waiting to see if you're going to end up having a fight with anyone, if anyone wants trouble. So you've got the anxiety of that and then you're talking to people and you're just trying to weird the situation up because you can't get people that try and take the piss out of you when you're in there. But you've just got to stand up for yourself and put it straight back on them. If anyone wants to take the piss out of you, you just put it straight back on the toes, bring it on. Then they'll not do it next time. Because if you don't, you'll become a victim and other people will take the piss out of you. And they'll try and take things from you. If you can't stand up for yourself, you will be severely bullied because I've seen it in the prisons. People say it doesn't happen, but it actually does. Some people might not say it. If you're a bit tougher and you don't, if you're not a victim of the bullying, which uh, I've seen a lot of it myself. But um, you've just got to be one step ahead and just always be on your guard and don't let anybody fuck with you because if you do like I say your life can become a living hell but the newbie in prison has just got to stand up for the self and make sure you're not fucked with otherwise like I say your life will be not worth living in there but um, once you're in prison and you get in there and you get settled you can sort of in a weird way enjoy it and just get on with your time It takes you a good couple of weeks to actually settle in properly and feel settled. Yeah, because like I say, the uncertainty that comes over the... takes about two weeks to find out your proper routine. When you might get a job, you know when you're getting unlocked. You know everything. Within two weeks, you know everyone on the wing. You know the screws. You know what's happening. Then you start feeling a little bit more relaxed. But, um, and then you get yourself in a good routine, going to the gym, and then you've got something to focus on, then you try and not think too much about the outside, but then you've still got, because you're on remand, or if you've been sentenced, you've then got the uncertainty that you are getting moved to another prison because you're just in a remand jail to start with. So everything, it takes a good few months to really feel settled. That's if you've got a big enough sentence. If you've only got a little sentence and you're out within a few months and you haven't even gotten time to get fucking settled properly and then you're out. Which, if you're lucky enough, you only get a small mm-hmm. sentence. Like I say, if you've got a big sentence, it takes you that amount of time to actually feel settled. Um, but it's like I say, it's not until you move on to the next jail. Your jail, that's been weird. Like you see, the first jail is just like a holding prison until you get moved. And then once you're moved, 
then you get settled, you start making friends, then it becomes your life, that is your life, and you do end up having a laugh with people in there when you make good friends. You've just got to make the most of it, but it's not a place where you want to be, definitely not, because the bad times totally outweigh the good times, and the good times is just when you're having a laugh with your pals or you're in the gym. The rest of the time, nearly 23 hours a day, you're banged up or you're doing stuff you don't want to do, like you're going to a workshop just to pass the time, but it's actually boring, it's fucking it's shit. But um, yeah, that's first time in prison. Keep tuned for future stories.